Um, you know, I was, I think I was born to play, man. I started playing at like two years old. And my father wasn't one of these fathers that was like, you're going to play basketball, or, you know. He wasn't one of those guys. It was just kind of, I was just around the game a lot. And uh, I gravitated to the ball and I was completely geeking out about like the smell of the ball and like the way it sounds when it hits concrete versus how it hits a parquet floor and like the sound of the nets and the different material of the nets. And, you know, there's certain basketball hoops, like in high school gyms and in college gyms, the rim sits slightly above the, the lower part of the backboard. And it was like, I was geeking out if I got into a gym which was like the NBA with the lower stanchion of the backboard and the, um, and the hoop were completely parallel with each other. Like, I, like little shit like that would freak me out. Like I, so to answer your question, I was born to do this thing, man. And, and I did it um, nonstop, all day long, um, from the age of two to when I retired, man. Sure. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's, you know, that's the trick, isn't it? It's, it's finding what you love to do. I mean, we talk about hard work all the time. It's like, you know, man, if you got to get up every single morning and remind yourself how hard you need to work, you probably need to choose a different profession, you know? Because that shouldn't be there. I, I wake up in the morning excited to get to it. You know, if I'm not training, I'm missing it. I'm not watching a game of basketball. I miss it. I'm, you know, there's no place I'd rather be. And if you have that feeling, then you are truly doing what God has put you on this earth to do. So I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, um, to be a sponge. But you always want to outwork your potential. As hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. I just dream. I dream. I have dreams, and uh, dreams is uh, they should be pure. And I, and I think a lot of times, you know, when we're born into this world, we actually wind up going backwards. And it seems like the more we mature, uh, the more responsible our dreams become, and the more governors we put on ourselves and our ability to dream and to reimagine. And it's always a fight for us parents and, you know, and for you guys to make sure that your dreams always stay pure. And so it's not a matter of, of, um, of pushing beyond the limitations or expectations. It's really a matter of protecting your dreams, protecting your imagination. That's really the key. And when you do that, then the world just seems limitless. I always dreamed as a kid that you know, it was possible to score 80 or 90 or 100. I always just like, you know, had a dream. You know, like sometimes you lay down in bed and you visualize things and you just kind of, you know, just, you know, that's how, that's at least how I would go to sleep. I'd lay down and I'd imagine playing for the Lakers and I'd imagine what the uniforms looked like. I'd imagine where we'd be playing and, you know, the smell of the arena and all sorts of stuff. And I would see myself, you know, getting hot, you know, and, you know score 10 straight points. And then, but in a dream, like, why would you ever interrupt that? Like, you're not gonna have a dream and be like, okay, and then he misses his next six. Like, it's not gonna happen. So you just keep dreaming and dreaming and dreaming. And before I go to sleep, I'm like at 120 points, you know? <laughs> and, so, and so when you grow up, downloading that into your brain over and over and over, and then, you know, that summer, I made a thousand shots a day. A thousand, right? That's on top of weight training and my conditioning. I made a thousand shots and it weren't just shots it were shots that you saw in that game there were specific shots i mean it was coming out of the corner going to the pinch post footwork in the post coming off the screen it was very specific so when you download that into your system and you go out in the, on the, in the court and you're just executing things that you've done thousands of times before and you have that dream then that becomes possible my philosophy was a very simple one i um and this is where i think film plays a big part of my life I, Rudy was one of my favorite films growing up. But after watching that film, I come to understand if I could work that hard every day um, with the, being blessed with the physical tools that I have, um, what would my career be? And I made a promise to myself from that day that I was gonna work that hard every single day so that when I do retire, I have no regrets. And that was the most important thing for me, is to leave no stone unturned, get better every single day. And if I lived that way, then over time, you know, I'd have something that was beautiful. But that was my philosophy. It seems like a pretty simple one, but, you know, if you live your life to just get better every single day, and you do that for 20 years, I mean, what do you have? But that's what practice was. You have to drive them. You absolutely have to. And if practice is more intense and harder 
then a game seven will be, then a game seven will be easy. But if it's not, then that's when teams start folding and capitulating. I think that if we focus on one thing and do that one thing exceptionally well, we won't fail at that one thing. So sometimes you gotta put the other stuff to bed and focus on what you believe is, is, uh, is the core of the company. And that always starts from what you love to do the most.